Howdy YouTube world, today I'm going to be reviewing the Tracer 4215B which is the new version of the 4215 which um, floods eBay. Nobody much seems to be selling this except Domitronic. They sent it to me by a toll, it took two weeks and I had no tracking information whatsoever. Uh, it comes in a nice box saying Efficient power we supply. And also got the MT50. Now the MT50 is very necessary. It comes with a nice, nice, uh, nice steady looking cable. And it's what you need to find out what's going on inside this 2.9 kilo heat sink. Um, Common to the original Tracer series, it's got some very nice clamps for the wire. It can hold about uh, 30 millimeters of cross section easily. And on the end here, you have a temperature sensor. Now I'm just going to open the thing. Once it's been opened, you're sort of none the wiser. It's it's got a, a circuit board with stuff that holds FETs onto the aluminium there, it's got some capacitors under here and it's got two coils nicely embedded in some rubbery kind of stuff which we presume has sort of heat sinking capabilities. There are some things that can destroy the capacity of an MPPT to come up with some decent current gain. One is dodgy panels. These are B-grade solar cells sold to me by a dodgy seller in Sydney. You can see that um, they're not a uniform blue colour. They tend to be light and dark. And I can compare that with some high quality cells. It's much more uniform and dark colour. This is another thing that can wreck the output potential of an MPPT, a very old panel. This is a Solar X from 1994 and it's done 20 years on the roof and the current output is about 60% of what it used to be. That really flattens the curve off. And the last but not least is that affects MPPT output is just the sheer heat on an Australian roof where the panels can get up to 80, 90 degrees. This is the way I like my panels mounted with a lot of air, being able to get behind them and the ability to swing the panels between a winter and summer configuration. As a lot of panel installations have gone up in Sydney with the panels mounted flat up against the roof, the panels probably working another 10, 15 degrees higher temperature than they should down another 10 percent, they're probably going to be dead within 10 years. These ones were the classics, BP Solar 80 Watt Monocrystalline lasted 6 or 7 years on my roof because the encapsulation gel under here blistered out uh, so the back of the cell doesn't contact anymore. This one I'm using to charge the car battery. This is the test rig. I'm about to compare the 12 volt function of the MPPT directly through this ammeter here and compare it with the solar input that goes through this switch back down through the same ammeter. What I do is I, I click this one off and then I click this one on. The test's about to be done and we're going to be done at 70 degree panel temperature.
This is a test to see whether I can get the maximum power point performance up by hosing down the panels with water. They're now around 25 degrees. I notice the, the current voltage is 15.8 which is a little bit up on usual. Conveniently the battery is at 13.4 which is precisely what I want. I'll do the next test with the vacuum cleaner on. Um, now I'm going to switch over. So we've got 18.5 compares with 16.6 which is still a very good gain. This is a test of cool panels oblique sunlight coming in around 35 degrees and I've got the toaster on which is forcing the voltage down to about 13. Currently the voltage is 16.3 which is good. Current 18.9. 13 volts it dropped to 12.9. Okay, before the toaster goes off. That's not 19 yeah. versus 16. So if you live in Finland and you've got the toaster on, great. I'm about to do the toaster test now, which is a test of how readily the MPPT is able to adjust dynamically downwards. Currently it's at 39.4 volts, which is at the top of the curve, and it's outputting 4.2 amps, which is necessary to maintain this inverter and the light. Turn the toaster on. There was a sudden adaptation there, but as you can see, it's still seeking. It's quite clear on the analog meter. It's seeking around 14, now it's changed its mind a little bit. Still at 36 volts, which is still, um, 31 volts is what it should be down to by now. Still doing quite a bit of seeking on the analog. I've seen it seek so much that it's given up and done a reboot, which is not very good in the 12 volt mode. Still at 35.4 volts, 35.1, it's just still 4 volts higher than it needs to be. And that's the toaster off. But it still didn't come down to the maximum power point necessary to drive the toaster. It has a reluctance to find the power point in dynamic situations. Put the toaster back on. Thirty-two. It's almost. It's almost there now. Oh, it's done a reboot. I don't know what algorithm they could possibly be running there. Oh, I've been seeking now for three minutes and well, I'm going to have to reboot while the toaster's on. So how long is it going to take to boot its Linux operating system again? I don't know what I don't know what operating system it's got. But whatever it, whatever it is, it takes a long time to boot and it seeks the entire power curve. Turn the toaster off.
it's running through the entire power curve I think no yes it's dropping it goes and measures everything down to about 16 volts are you going to go up now? And so it's spent an entire minute measuring parts of the curve that aren't necessary and now it's found the maximum power point Now I'm going to play a really mean trick on the tracer. I'm going to pull a couple of tails off the panels at precisely 1 minute 30 in its boot cycle to convince it that uh, the peak power is way down the bottom of the curve. So I have to put it into its booting calibration and welcome. There we go, 1 minute 30. Out the door. So what does it think? Yeah, that's what I thought. It now thinks the maximum power point is at 15.9 on 24 volt panels. It's now going to struggle. The point of doing all this is because I've seen it happen a few times now. It gets confused if it's doing a calibration cycle as um, if the sun comes out from behind a cloud and it enters a dynamic situation where it's continuously recalibrating I think it eventually gets it right because it has a logic in it that slowly moves up the curve again and then reboots but if it reboots when the clouds on it again it has a potential to be always wrong if you think this is a cruel trick to play on a piece of technology I really shouldn't be able to run out the door and do this to it it should, it should be back on its feet by now It is slowly migrating. It's stubbornly refusing to believe there's any life above 17 volts. It's accelerating, 18.4. I figure it's going to figure it out soon. 18.8, yeah. It's Nineteen minutes, 